Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm here to do another round of horror reads. This is a good group focusing on books that are underhyped and in a lot of cases, new favorites. I'll be honest with you all, this year has been a little bit rough when it comes to horror. I have definitely found some favorites, but at the same time, I have gone through periods where I was picking up horror books and putting them down or I was finishing them, but I kind of felt like I was going through the motion in order to be able to review them. And it always worries me, making me think that I might be falling out of love with the genre. But that's why I read other things like fantasy and science fiction. It kind of helps me when I'm feeling a little bit slumpy. But I'm very happy to report that I'm on a really good streak when it comes to reading horror right now. I'm finding some new favorites, as I mentioned, and I'm excited to share them all with you. There are some more underhyped or lesser known books in this video, and so I I hope you all will enjoy that. I've heard before that a lot of you do come to my channel looking to hear about books that you don't necessarily hear about in other booktube channels. So hopefully I can deliver once more. All that being said, let's get into the books. First, I read The Good House by Tiana Reeve Dew. This was actually a book I read with my Patreon book club. If you want more information, I always have it listed down below. It's a fantastic group of mostly women, but also men discussing all their favorite horror books and not only discussing the book that's selected, but we pretty much talk about everything else we're reading and watching and so forth. And I interact with them every day. It's really fun. But going back to the book, this follows a woman who is preparing for a July 4th party when she finds her son has committed suicide in the basement. That is not a spoiler. It happens right at the beginning of the story. And then what we follow is the aftermath of that event. The story is actually broken out into two timelines. And so in the present day, we get to see this mother as she is dealing with the grief of losing her teenage son. And she is trying to come to terms with what happened. She returns to the house where the suicide happened. It's actually a family house that was called The Good House, and it was where her grandmother lived. And there's a lot of really good memories there because her grandmother was believed to be a bit of a healer, possibly kind of a positive or good witch in the community. And so the house is supposedly a good house, but now it has been tainted by this terrible, terrible tragedy. The story, as I mentioned, is also told over a second timeline, so you actually get to go back to before the suicide happened. And part of the story is told from the perspective of the son. And I really enjoyed that perspective because it created a lot of suspense for me because you see the son slowly going throughout his days and finding out what actions led to his suicide. And despite a book that deals with such a dark subject matter, it's very complex and it's not depressing. Instead, it's very much a character study book. So you do spend a lot of time getting to know the different characters but I did feel it had enough plot to definitely keep me going, to keep me invested. It's also a very long horror book, which if you know me, it's not always something that works very well. Depending on the edition you get, it's either 500 or 700 plus pages. And I ended up really enjoying it. I did do it on audio, which probably did help, but it really didn't feel long. There was never a case where I felt like whole sections should be cut out. Instead, I was invested throughout the whole story and I thought it was gonna be a solid four star read, but then I got to the end and I really liked the ending. I understand that the ending is not gonna work for everyone. It's gonna be a pet peeve of some people because it's kind of one of those controversial endings. But for me, it's one I really enjoy when I find it in a book and I just loved it. So it really pushed this book up a notch. I ended up giving it 4.5 stars. I would definitely recommend it. And of course, Tiana Reeve Dew brings in her fan fantastic diversity. So not only do you get a story that is wonderful and suspenseful, but you also get some really good commentary on what it's like to be a black person in North America, specifically in the US. And it definitely opened my eyes to things that I didn't consider and definitely experiences that are not my own. So really loved so much about this book. Definitely recommend it. It was so much fun to buddy read with my patrons and I just loved it so much. Next, I read The Bright Lands by John Frams, and this is a book that is set in a small town that is obsessed with football. The story is told from a few different perspectives, and one of them is the brother of a football player who is incredibly talented. One night, he sends his brother a text saying that he no longer wants to play football anymore. He doesn't like it, but feels trapped in the town. And then after that, the young teenage football prodigy goes 
missing. And so the story is not told from the football player's perspective, but rather all the people around him. One being his brother who goes back to this small town and is trying to investigate what happened to his brother. The story is also told from the perspective of a female cop that is trying to investigate the crime, as well as several of the other football players and football related people like the cheerleaders. Now this book deals with a lot of heavy topics, one of them being the challenges of being gay in a very prejudiced small town. And so we find out that the brother of the football player actually left the town because he was gay himself and he was exposed in a very embarrassing way. And so he has moved away and is only reluctantly back to search for his brother. And that plays into the story in a really large way and I don't wanna give away too much of that, but just know that there is a very heavy queer focus in this book. And with that, I'd say this book is very character focused. I really like the character of Joel, the older gay brother, and I was very intrigued by the younger brother who, again, we only get to hear about from the outside because we don't get his perspective. And so I was very curious to see what happened, why he disappeared, and from there, just figuring out the mystery around his disappearance. And I will say I did not love the other perspectives in this book. I just found them to be okay. And because of that, I wasn't as invested in their chapters and this is a book with a very unusual ending it goes to some really strange places that I did not particularly enjoy so I will say I like the setup of this book it's well written there are some good character work on the main characters at least but I really didn't like where this book went to and it's hard to talk about without spoilers but it's not one I would personally recommend. In terms of classification, this book could be considered horror because it does have a supernatural aspect to it, but in a lot of ways it read more like a classic mystery suspense thriller, so I'd almost recommend it more to those of you that like that kind of story, but while it's a thriller, while it's a mystery of what happened to this young football player, it's again really more about the prejudices of a small town and the horrible things that they do to their young people. So not a personal favorite. I was disappointed because I went to this book with really high hopes. It did some good things, it did some not so good things, and I think let's just move along. <laughs> Next I read a book called December Park by Ronald Malfi, and this is set in a small town where there are a series of disappearances, young teenagers are going missing, and there's a question of whether or not they're simply running away or perhaps there is something more sinister going on. Right at the beginning of the story, a young teenage girl is found murdered, and so the tone of these disappearances is changed and the town now believes that there is possibly a serial killer on the loose that they have dubbed the Pied Piper. And the story is primarily told from the perspective of a young group of teenage boys that are invested in these disappearances. The one boy's father is a police investigator, so he is tied to the murders that way. And together with a new boy that moves into town who is kind of weird and a little bit awkward, they decide to investigate the case and try to figure out who the serial killer is. Now, this book is technically more of a mystery than a horror book because there really isn't an overarching supernatural angle to it. If you're looking for that, you won't find it here. But this is a book that will get classified as horror because it follows the classic narrative of a coming of age story where you have a group of boys investigating an evil in the town. And so if you enjoy those kind of stories, something in the vein of it, then this is definitely one to check out. I'll be honest, I'm actually not a fan of coming of age stories, particularly coming of age male stories, they rarely, rarely work for me and I'm often very dissatisfied. I know it's an unpopular opinion and most horror book reviewers love those books, but they just don't tend to work for me. But I did decide to pick this one up and I'm so glad I did. I do wanna mention that this book is very underhyped and hard to get. Currently, it is not available for print or Kindle sale, but I understand that that is gonna change in January, so I'll let you know when it's available. Hopefully, your library has a copy. I found out about this book from Taylor Talks Books. I'm gonna link her channel down below. She is a horror booktuber I found this year and absolutely love, and she did a fantastic video on coming-of-age horror. And like I said, despite not liking it, I was intrigued enough to watch her recommendations video, and she made this book sound so good that I had to try it for myself 
myself. And I'm so thankful that I took her recommendation because this book just had such good character work. I thought the boys were incredibly realistic. It's set in the 90s, which is part of my childhood. And I very much related to the references and they weren't overdone. It was just the right touch of nostalgia. And the characters again, just felt like the teenage boys that I knew in my teens. And I just really liked them. They were just normal people and the mystery was so good. I was so intrigued what was gonna happen. The ending comes a little bit out of nowhere. I was not expecting it. I thought it was gonna be really predictable and it was not. So take that for what it is. But this book just pulled me in. The writing, the story, the characters, everything worked wonderfully for me. The main character is of Italian descent and you get to see even the prejudices in this small town against his family and how his family heritage plays into his daily life. There is just so many good layers to this book. I really hope it gets a full release right now. My understanding is that come January, it will be available via Kindle or at least in some kind of ebook form. And I just really hope you all find a way to check it out because it's so worth it. I am just dying to reread it. I honestly could have read it again as soon as I finished it. And I don't say that very often. So highly, highly recommend it. I was in love with it when I read it. It gave me a book hangover and and I am just craving finding any coming of age story that can possibly top it because it's definitely my favorite right now of the subgenre. And finally, I wanna talk about Rite of Extinction by Matt Serafini. This is one that I received from the author for review. And this is a horror novella that follows an alcoholic private investigator that is trying to track down the person that murdered their daughter. And so they end up going to a small town and what they find there is very unexpected. I have been so intrigued to check out this novella for a while because I've seen so many five-star reviews of it, but all the reviewers have been very quiet about giving away too much of the plot and I never really knew why because I feel like the plot synopsis I gave you sounds rather incomplete, but there's a reason for that. And I'll say that this book is very unexpected. I went in not really knowing what this book was about and that made for the best reading experience. I really like the main character of Rebecca the private investigator. Yes, the alcoholic PI is a little bit of a stereotype, but despite that, despite the few number of pages in this book, I thought the author did such a good job of the characterization of her. I thought she was very likable, relatable, sympathetic, and I was definitely rooting for her. And like I said, this book was unexpected. The only thing I will warn you is that it does get gruesome at times, which for some of you, if you're like me, that will definitely pique your interest. And I just thought it was a solid four star read. Definitely recommend it. And it's one you just have to try it for yourself, but it's worth it. So definitely see if you can read it. And I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. So that is it for this video. And please let me know down below that I've convinced you to pick up at least one of these books. I am so excited to talk about them online and I would love more people to be reading them so I can discuss them with more people. And again, this has just been a great reading month. I just found myself picking up good book after good book and it's just making me me fall in love with the horror subgenres all over again and fall in love with subgenres like coming of age that I didn't actually think I liked. So maybe I'll leave it here by asking you all to recommend me your favorite coming of age horror stories, especially if they're a little bit different because I really want to try more of them. I want to try anything that will give me the same feelings I got while I was reading December Park. I want that experience again. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. I do read a lot of horror as well as like mysteries, thrillers, science fiction, and fantasy. And as always, I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.